Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Sandra and I make videos all about cybersecurity topics as well as having a career in technology. And today's video is going to be a continuation of the series on different careers in cybersecurity. Previous roles I've done are SOC analysts, pen testers, and a red team versus blue team. And I can link all those videos below if you guys are interested in checking those out as well. But today's video is going to be all about compliance, audit and governance. So you may already have some preconceived notions about all three of those terms. And honestly, I do understand why, because when you hear audit or compliance, it's not as interesting versus pen testing and software development. But I do think that these are great roles for anyone who's, who's trying to transition from another role that isn't as technical in technology, or maybe you're just switching careers altogether. These are really good roles that are kind of in between the business, the regulators, and the technology side or the cybersecurity teams. And if you're someone who's good at that business know-how and know how to speak with different stakeholders with different levels of technicality, then this could be a really good career option for you. Okay, so let's just start off with a general description of what compliance and governance versus audit is. Governance and compliance teams are usually there to make sure that development teams or whatever teams are there are doing what they're supposed to do. So there may be a set of processes or policies that your company has in place and development teams or cybersecurity teams are expected to follow those guidelines and policies. But obviously these policies aren't going to be at the forefront of development teams or cyber teams every single day. They're gonna be coding, they're gonna be doing pen testing assessments. They're not gonna be worrying about whether or not they are following specific policies. So that's where the compliance and governance teams come into play because they are the ones who are really kind of like the gatekeepers not really gatekeepers, but maybe kind of like the chaperones of these policies because they are there to make sure that development teams and other technical teams are doing the right thing. Really any team in your company probably has some kind of governance or compliance team that's put in place to make sure that they're following certain guidelines set by the company. For example, in a security organization, let's say there are applications in your company that needs to get a vulnerability scan every six months or every one year. So that would be a required policy that, that your team has to follow, but the compliance and governance teams are the ones making sure that you're following that and that you know that there are deadlines coming up that you have to hit. So these teams are really kind of like the policing of different policies that your company has. And sometimes they do get a bad rap because obviously if you don't follow certain policies, you'll likely get some kind of red flag or some kind of consequence model that your company has for not completing these deliverables that are required. Sometimes it's just a slap on the wrist and sometimes there may be big consequences to them. So it really depends on what rules you may be breaking, which is why compliance and governance teams don't always have the best reputation. And honestly, it's a lot of paperwork. So if you're someone who's good at keeping track of deadlines, keeping track of paperwork, um, documenting things, keeping up with different stakeholders, and potentially across multiple organizations and lines of businesses, then this will probably be a really good job for you. But you'll also need to understand the why and the how behind every single policy, because obviously when you're working with development teams, there's gonna be some pushback on certain policies that exist in the company, and they may not want to do the deliverable that they're required to do. So it really is a lot of people skills, a lot of working with technical teams and also getting them to complete certain things that, that they may not actually want to do. And now on the audit side, this side, it really depends on the setup of your company again. Um, so just keep that in mind. This isn't for every single company because there may be companies out there that are smaller that have audit compliance governance all mixed together. But if you're working for a company that is more closely regulated, especially if it's a government agency or a government contractor role, those usually have more regulations or finance companies, especially, or even in healthcare. There's a lot of regulations out there that need to be followed. For example, if you have healthcare data, there's a certain level of encryption that needs to be used against any data that is stored as personal health information so audit really manages a lot closer to those regulations that are passed down to your company based on whatever field or sector that it's in so you can think of audit as the team that manages the broader regulations that get funneled down from government policies and government regulators that your company or really any company in your sector has to follow yeah it's really a lot of policy work really a lot of rules and regulations and it definitely does take a certain type of person to do this job and do it well but the people that i know who are in compliance and audit roles are the people who really like to ask questions about why things are the way that they are. Especially if you're in audit, you're technically kind of like the company's highest line of defense right before the regulators. And because you want to keep your company as safe as possible from external audits, from government agencies or, or other organizations, you want to make sure that your company is doing the right thing. Obviously that is the main job of audit. So because of that, audit tends to be a lot more strict 
and stringent compared to compliance and governance teams because even though you may be doing what you need to do on the governance and compliance side audit might come in and say hey this process isn't enough like there's something else that's missing or there's a gap that they want you to fix or create a new process for and that's really what audit is there for they're there to help you see the gaps in whatever processes that you may have and that could be based off of regulations coming from higher up the chain or it could spawn from other audits that are happening in other areas of your company and if you're working for a big company honestly there's probably hundreds of audits going on at a time and it's not necessarily a bad thing even though a lot of people see it that way as someone who's worked through my first audit this year and led a lot of the evidence gathering it's it's really really tedious but i do think that it's worth it because it makes your it makes your team overall stronger because you're adding more structured processes to your team that you originally wouldn't have had or maybe it's something that you've been putting off on the back burner because you have other bau everyday things that you're working on but audi is the one who kind of whips you into shape and makes you do certain things that that you probably think needs to be done anyway but you just haven't done yet so yeah maybe you can kind of see audit as like the government of your company's policies and then um, compliance and governance are kind of like the police so they carry out and reinforce things but the government's really the one making the rules and that's the thing that trickles down to every other policy in your company so yeah it's really a complex system there's a lot of opinions and decisions obviously that go into place depending on the executives in your company the board of directors your CISO your CIO your CTO honestly in a technology organization there's so many different policies out there and so many different audits going on for so many different things whether it's the technology you use whether it's how you're storing people's data how you're encrypting certain things is there's a new process going on are you doing it well enough to be considered up to par to certain standards and all that is right up audits alley and of course in audit there's different levels of technicalness that you could have so if you're an IT auditor, you're probably checking if certain technologies are, are up to the secure standards that your company is looking for, whether it's protocols, encryption, what tech stack it's using. But oftentimes auditors are also assessing processes and not just single applications. So next let's talk about the skills and tools that auditors use. And this one is, is really kind of dependent on what kind of technology or what kind of processes that you are auditing. So for example, if you're an IT auditor, you could even be doing similar things to a web application pen tester. And you may be expected to know certain things about the architecture of certain applications or the overall infrastructure of your company and maybe even some experience completing risk assessments but a lot of the day-to-day -day work is likely going to be around writing reading reports and, and evaluating evidence from other teams and when you look online the main skills needed for auditors are really softer skills like communication skills writing skills handling multiple different audits that are happening at the same time being able to talk to technical and non-technical people and being able to relay messages between either parties so you really are kind of like a chameleon in this role because you get to talk to so many different people and work across so many different teams across the company. And in terms of technology, I really can't give you a, a specific tech or tool that all auditors use because you may have an internal dashboard or an internal website that your company uses to keep track of internal audits and different compliance or governance items. So it really depends, but, but it would probably be a basic web application that allows stakeholders and or essentially the actual teams where they can go on and submit some kind of evidence, um, submit some kind of report, provide some kind of answer to whether or not they completed a certain process or document. And then maybe an auditor or a compliance officer can go in and say, yes, we verified this and it looks right. Or no, we need more evidence and provide some kind of feedback for them to work off of. So there can really be a lot of back and forth and audits can take a very long amount of time. It really all depends on how big the issue is at hand that the audit is basically created for. But again, the main skill that you need as an auditor is probably curiosity because you always want to ask why. And I think it's like the rule of five whys where you basically ask why five times to get to the root of an actual question and get the real answer of why someone is doing or why a team is doing things a certain way and that's really how you're going to be able to help team improve whatever processes or technology that they have so yeah if you're someone who is into questioning everything and is good at figuring out the in-depth reasons of why a process is the way it is and not just because it's the easy way to do things and oftentimes it could just be that it was the easiest way to do things for certain teams i mean there's a lot of teams out there who are doing things in some kind of fixed bandaged way because it's just it's working and nothing has burned down yet but as an auditor you want to make sure that things are done the right way the secure way and especially if you're working in it audit or cybersecurity audit so again if you're someone who is a technologist but don't necessarily want to work on technology but you do want to work between the business side and tech people then an it audit role a compliance role or a governance role would really be good options especially if you have strong writing and analytical skills so now let's talk about salary and certifications and experience requirements so based on glass 
store the average salary for an IT auditor. I specifically chose IT auditor because I feel like because I feel like that would be the most relevant role for at least at least for the audience of this channel, especially if you're in technology, because you're probably not going to be auditing, you know, accounting firms. So the average salary for an IT auditor role is about seventy nine thousand dollars per year. On the low range, it's about fifty seven thousand dollars per year, and on the high range, it's about one hundred and eleven thousand dollars per year. So obviously this will fluctuate depending on your company, depending on your sector, depending on what state and the cost of living. So most of the IT auditor jobs that I've seen usually require five plus years of experience in a similar role. A lot of people who do go into IT auditing do start out in some kind of compliance or governance role. And two of the most common certifications I've seen are the CISA or the Certified Information Systems Auditor Certification, which I believe is one that my friend also got who happens to be an IT auditor as well as the CISSP which is a really popular cybersecurity generalist certification. And now going into IT governance slash compliance jobs, the average salary on Glassdoor for IT governance is about $67,000 per year. This range is a lot wider from $37,000 to about $121,000 per year. And I do think there's a good reason for this because IT governance slash compliance officers, they usually can tend to be a bit more entry level, but if you are a more senior person, you could still be in compliance slash governance later in your career with, with five, 10 plus years of experience, but just be a lot more senior in terms of experience. And I believe IT governance and compliance roles are a bit more junior compared to auditor roles who have a lot more power and control in what kinds of policies shape your company. So there may be a lot more entry level roles in the governance slash compliance space compared to audit. And that's why this range is super, super wide. So for governance and compliance, if you've worked in any kind of role that, that deals with reporting, manages certain teams, manages certain metrics or functions that another team is working on, I would consider that somewhat relevant experience for an IT compliance or governance role. And that's definitely a good way to get your foot in the door because because if you're someone who doesn't have any tech experience or maybe you have IT help desk experience, those roles still have transferable skills that you would use in compliance and governance. And there's also a good amount of certifications in the governance and compliance space, including the CIPP or the Certified Information Privacy Professional Certification and the CGEIT, a bit of a tongue twister there, which is the Certification in Governance of Enterprise IT. All right, so that's it for this video. Let me know what you guys think about compliance, governance, and auditor roles. Let me know if any of you guys would be interested in a role like this. I know these roles don't have a great rep because oftentimes it is a lot of paper pushing, a lot of documentation, a lot of writing, and a lot of writing reports and keeping track of evidence from other teams. So it can be a little bit mundane at times, but I do think it's a good role for a certain subset of personalities, especially if you're someone who is really good at keeping track of things and, and getting really deep in the weeds with certain processes. Like if you're someone who loves to optimize processes, then this is probably a good job for you. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope you guys found it helpful. Let me know in the comments below any other cybersecurity roles you might want me to make a video about, and I'll be happy to add that to my list. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesday at 2 p.m. and Sundays at 12 p.m. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.